In part one, we studied how to parametrize line segments in the complex plane. For this part, we want to parametrize circles and circular arcs. Now, we have a checklist for parametrizing curves in the complex plane. First step, treat our curve as a subset of the xy plane. Then, to parametrize, we're looking for a function r of t. t is going to be a real number. When I fix a t, that's going to return a point in the plane. Now, we'll need two functions, x of t and y of t, to represent our coordinates. Once we have those functions, then to get the parametrization in the complex plane, I just set z of t equal to x of t plus i y of t. When we do line integrals, we'll be interested in a direction or an orientation for our curve. So, if we don't have the right orientation with the parametrization from part two, the way we can fix that, we're going to replace t with minus t. Then the interval that we're using for our parameter, say a, b, we change that to minus b minus a. Now, if we want to parametrize circles in the complex plane, let's start with the basic case of a circle of radius r centered at zero. So, points that'll be on this circle. Okay, we'll have r on the real axis, r times i on the y-axis, and then minus r, minus r times i. So, if we think in terms of the xy plane, we can use polar coordinates. So to get points on this circle, I can just use r of t equal to r cosine of t, r sine of t. Now note what we're getting here. If I mark off t is the angle between Okay, our point and the positive x-axis, or the real axis. Then as I let t grow, the angles are going to start going in this direction, meaning our orientation is counterclockwise. We use this parametrization. If we convert to the complex plane, I'll have z of t equal to r cosine of t plus i r sine of t. I can factor out the r. And then with what's left over, we can use Euler's formula to convert that to r times e to the i t. Then we'll have, for our parameter, t is going to be between 0 and 2 pi. So that gives us one loop. If we want multiple loops, so if I want two loops, I would go to 4 pi, three loops, we go to 6 pi. Let's verify the orientation by checking two points. Now, if I use the endpoints, t equals 0 and 2 pi. In both cases, z returns r, so that doesn't help us. Now, if we use 0 and pi, okay, pi is the midpoint, z returns r and minus r. Again, that's no help. We still can't tell if we're going along the top or along the bottom. If we use 0 and pi halves, z returns r and r times i. And now we can see movement in the counterclockwise direction. So, if we're going to check orientation by using two points, we want to make sure those two points are close so that there's no ambiguity. Now, what about the circle oriented in the clockwise direction? Our recipe says, I just send t to minus t, change our interval from 0 to 2 pi to minus 2 pi minus 0, or just plain 0. Now, because our circle repeats every 2 pi, we can add 2 pi to each point here to get back our interval 0 to 2 pi. The new formula that we use, z of t equals r e to the minus i t. Then if I check at our point 0 and pi halves, we get r and minus r i. So you can see now we're moving in the clockwise direction. Next. How about circles that are not centered at the origin? So let's suppose we're centered at the point z0 equal to x0 plus i y0 in the complex plane. That point corresponds to x0 y0 in the xy plane. So we could just take our old parametrization for the circle of radius r centered at the origin. To shift it, we just add x0 y0. So, our new parametrization is going to be r of t equals x0 plus r cosine t, y0 plus r sine t. We use our recipe. 
Then we just reorganize to get back to our x0 plus i y0, which is z0. And then we have, using Euler's formula, the r e to the i t. So if I want to parametrize circle centered at z0 of radius r, we just use our old formula at our center z0. Now, because Singh is believing, let's just check that our equation returns a formula for a circle. So here's our equation. Push the z0 to the other side. I'm going to take the modulus square to both sides. Now, on the right-hand side, r is a real number. E to the it is on the unit circle. So its modulus is equal to 1. So the modulus squared is going to be r squared. On the other side, taking the modulus squared of zt minus z0. If we separate into the real and imaginary parts, the real part is going to be xt minus x0. The imaginary part is going to be yt minus y0. Then the modulus squared is just going to be the sum of the squares of the real and imaginary parts. So I get xt minus x0 squared plus yt minus y0 squared equals r squared. Now, that's just the formula for a circle centered at x0, y0 with radius r. So that verifies our equation for a circle. Finally, here's a common scenario for line integrals. So we're going to have a semicircular arc. We'll either have a straight line segment along the bottom, or it'll be a straight line interrupted by another semicircle. Okay, everything oriented in counterclockwise direction. For our big arc, which I'll call C1, okay, we're going to go from angle 0 to angle pi. We're going counterclockwise. So we're just going to use z of t equal to r e to the i t. t goes from 0 to pi. Now if we check 0, pi, and pi halves, just to make sure we're staying on this arc, we'll have r, we'll have r times i, and we'll have minus r. So that's going to go in the way that we want. Now for the small semicircle, we're going to go clockwise. So I'm going to use z t equal to r e to the minus i t. And then let's think about the numbers we want to use. Well, we're going in this direction. Okay, well, we're zero here. This travels till we get to pi. So we're going to start at pi, and then I just want to follow this out till we get back to zero or two pi. So I'm going to use t going from pi to two pi. Of course, we check. So if I put pi in here, we get minus r. If I put three pi halves in there, think about what's happening. This is zero. So 3 pi halves is going to put us to this point up top, which we want. So that's going to be r times i. And then we finish with 2 pi, which brings us back to r. So that's going to give us this arc going from here to here in the clockwise direction. Then for C2 and C4, the straight line segments, there's not much going on there. We're just working along the real axis. So I could just let our z of t be equal to t in both cases, and then it's just picking your parameters correctly. So going from minus r to r, and r to r, okay, small and capital.